this is Shannon from SIS, the number four, teachers.org. We're so excited that you've joined us today to uh, learn about a tutorial really to help you to bring in story problems into your first grade classroom. The example we're going to be showing today is using a part hole missing add-in. The code above here helps teachers to sort of understand the different types of story problems that we'll be doing. In this example, we'll be showing you how to do it in a proportional way and also a non-proportional way. So we're gonna show the example with both differences. The beginning of first grade, you might be working a little bit more from that proportional level and then eventually moving up into a, a non-proportional bar. We have a lot of scaffolds on this particular journal to help you as students start to develop the skills for story problems. We're gonna look at our step-by-step -step checklist that we have that really helps us with visual models to help us understand. There's seven steps that we do in the first grade classroom to help us with it. Step one is really to read the entire problem by putting in the chunks. So the way that we're gonna do that is when we read the whole problem, we're gonna read it entirely through and then we're gonna kind of go back and read the different chunks. So as I go back over to look at our story mat here, I'm gonna read the problem. Mark has nine strawberries, six of them are small and the rest are large. How many large strawberries did Mark have? Once the story problem is read aloud by the teacher or the student, you wanna to start to read the story problem a little bit slower. Mark has nine strawberries. That's a new piece of mathematical information and we would like students to kind of pause here and create a chunk. A chunk is just a line that's gonna help us know we have some new mathematical information in our story. Let's continue reading. Six of them are small. I heard some more math information, so kids are going to stop, re repeat this statement, and then we're gonna say chunk. And the rest are large. Kids would go ahead and repeat that, and then we'd go ahead and put the chunk. Our last part says, how many large strawberries did Mark have? Chunk. We notice in this story problem that we actually have four chunks of information. We wanna make sure that kids are checking off these brackets as they start to fill it in on our model that we have down here for our visual model. So we go back to our checklist. We can simply put a check that we did read the entire problem. We put the chunks in. The second part of the problem solving process for visual models is to rewrite the question in sentence form. We can go ahead and put this in sentence form because it helps students to understand what the question's asking. So if we go back to our story problem mat here, for first grade, we've already scaffolded this sentence. So Mark has hmm, strawberries. If students want to, they can underline that, the actual question in the story to help them understand how that's developed. Throughout the first grade year, students will eventually be able to start to do their sentence form on their own, and you may put different blank spaces in. The reason for our sentence form is so that we know exactly what we're solving the story problem on. So we don't start going and adding or subtracting. We really take some time to really process what this question is asking us. If we go back to our checklist, we can really check off that step two because we've now have that completed. Step three asks us to determine the who and or what is involved in the problem. So we're gonna look at kind of the characters in the story, what's really happening. So if we kind of go back to our uh, mat here, this is kind of already scaffolded for first graders towards the beginning of the year, and I went ahead and labeled that as Mark's Strawberries. So that's our who and our what. Again, as first grade continues, you might put Mark, but you might not put Strawberries, or eventually this might be blank throughout the first grade year as you scaffold it for the child to be able to put in the who or the what. So if we go back to our checklist, we can go ahead and kind of check out that we kind of know that our who our who and our what is. We're gonna draw in the unit bar and then we're gonna kind of go back and look at the chunks to see what's happening. If we look back at this journal page that we have, this is a scaffolded journal where we've already put in the proportional bars. They do match exactly the way the story problem reads, but over time we want kids to transition. So we have the bar here. If I were looking at a 
non-proportional unit, which would look more like the visual model, I might leave this open and eventually get to the point where kids can add this in. In this video, we're gonna show you in both ways the way this looks. So I'm gonna go back to my checklist, really because the drawing part is already connected. The unit bar is already in there, and so we have that sort of scaffolded in the journal for you. You can determine where students are in this stage. The next part of our checklist says to go back, take a look at the chunks, and we're gonna check off the parts when we have it added into our model. Remember, this is a reading comprehension strategy. Kids want to hustle and figure out if they're adding or subtracting to get the answer, but at the end of the day, we're just trying to create a visual model for what the word problems are asking. So if we go back and look at this first chunk of information, it says Mark has nine strawberries. So let's go ahead and put in the total that we have here. If we counted this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The total for ours is nine. We wanna make sure in this step that kids go back and check off the part that they put in their visual model. Six of them are small. So I'm gonna put X's in mine to show my six small. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now kids did put how many, but what does this bracket of information say? It means that they're small. Kids could just write S if you wanted to, or if they're able to copy it from the problem, they can go ahead and write that this represents the strawberries in our story problem that are small. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a check in this segment of the story problem. The rest are large. I'm gonna put circles for my rest to kind of indicate that these ones here are going to represent the large strawberries. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in large. Therefore, I'm gonna put my check mark on this side of it. The question mark is something that you wanna make sure that kids enter in. In a scaffolded, proportional way that we're showing here, you have a line where the kids are gonna know where to put the question mark. The question mark is not asking for the child to put the answer there, but we want this whole visual model to be able to tell us exactly what this story problem says. So I have the check, I'm gonna go ahead and I put my question mark rather, I'm gonna put my check here. We wanna be able to look at this in both ways. So depending on if your students are here, this is much more of a scaffolded way that we created this journal. But in our first grade journal, when students are ready, they can move ahead to look at this in a non-proportional way. So again, the way that would look, just to kind of give you an idea, is the total here is nine. I have to kind of estimate here about maybe here, I'm gonna say that six, um, or nine, there's nine strawberries total, this section is six, six of these strawberries are small and the rest are large. So as students start to go from the proportional way of looking at it and then switch to the non-proportional, you can help guide them. And here I'm not going to have individual pieces showing, I'm just going to write the total in it as you see it. In the rest of the video, I'll be using the proportional model that we have here for students to look at. So as far as I go back and look, I have all my checks in my chunks. I'm gonna go back to my checklist and I'm going to go ahead and check off that step. Because I went back in my problem, I put the chunks and I put the checks. You wanna make sure that kids are really putting all of the details in their model drawing that they're creating. This visual model should really be enough that I could look at that model and I should know what the story problem is saying. Now is the time for students to start to compute. So step six says correctly compute and solve the problem. In the bottom section here, we have the computation. Now students here can obviously count that and know very easily that there's three because they drew it out, but we would like them to do a number bomb or maybe a number sentence. So if I wanted to say we started off with nine strawberries, I know that six of them are small and the rest are large. I can show you in my number bond that six and three totals nine. I also could look at this as I started off with nine and I kind of separated out um, six of them to make it so that I know that there are three left. Students could also draw a picture here if you wanted to and maybe a 10 frame and they could kind of cross it off. That computation is kind of up to them on how they do it. So if we go back to our checklist now, we really have um, computed the story problem correctly and we sort of have our answer. 
Remember that sentence form that we wrote on step two, it's time to circle back around to make sure our answer is fully complete. So going back to my journal page, I'm going to look at my question to see what it was asking. Mark has hmm, large strawberries. We know now how many Mark has. We know that Mark has three large strawberries, which means that we have completed this process. So if we go back to our checklist, we now have completed the last step, which that says to go ahead and write the answers in the sentence and make sure the answer makes sense. We hope that you enjoyed our video on how to really look at bringing in story problems into first grade in a really developmentally appropriate way by scaffolding. You can feel free to watch our other tutorial videos about how to integrate this into first grade with part whole addition, part whole subtraction, and even additive comparison. If you have students that are younger than this, you can also go to our Math for Littles to check out more about that. Feel free to join us on our website at sis4teachers.org. We'd love to see you on any of our social media channels from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or LinkedIn, all with the same handle, at sis4teachers. Thanks so much for joining us.